Thanks for watching. Uh, quick reminder, Mercury Scholar Society members, make sure you guys check your email. You have the download link for the last meeting. If you didn't make the meeting, you've been emailed the link to download that video. So make sure you guys check your email. You're also going to be sent the email for, you know, the schedule tomorrow for the um, uh, Amazon fulfillment course and, uh, you know, the Amazon affiliate course. Make sure you guys uh, get the email and follow the instructions in the email so that you have everything set and ready for the three day course. We're going to go through the Amazon affiliate program, how to set it up correctly so you're making money day one, how to get everything going and how to generate a nice income uh, monthly with Amazon affiliate course. It's no way you're going to fail with this. We're going to show you guys the in and out, how I've been doing it for years and uh, how to make money immediately with this whole program. So we're going to go through that whole thing. So make sure you guys, American Scholar Society members, check your emails for that information. Uh, also, uh, today, last day, the last full day that you'll be able to join at this final price. We're in the final stage of American Scholar Society membership. Um, final stage, I did not increase the price. I kept it the same for the final stage, you know, to help people out. So after today, um, this is the last full day. So tomorrow you have a few more hours to take care of that. And then that'll be that will be in the uh, last uh, last situation, which you will, you know, you have to pay full price. Um, and it's a payment plan as well. So you can take advantage of that. So make sure you guys take advantage now while the price is where it's at and it's low and you'll save a lot of money, you know, uh, take advantage of it. Links in the description. But yeah, let's get into this video. So yeah, for uh, the people who's been sending uh, questions about you know, demons, you know, I have videos on YouTube about Satan and demons or what have you, but there's a lot of videos going around, a lot of information that people are looking into. And as I said, for new people, when you guys first start searching this stuff and researching, you're going to run into Satan and run into demons. You're going to run into, you know, people channeling demons and everything like that. And that's basically what this video is about. So you'll see uh, and a lot of people send me these videos. You have a lot of actors who talk about channeling. You know, Michael Jackson talked about channeling. Liberace talked about channeling. Um, Michael Jackson talked about channeling Liberace. <laughs> so it's a lot of um, celebrities, uh, actors, you know, um, a lot of people in the entertainment business that talk about channeling. And it's, it gives this whole understanding that they are channeling evil spirits, right? And you have to really think about this and be conscious about what you're, what you're saying. So, um, you know, Terrence Howard recently did a whole interview where he was talking about going into the bathroom in the dark and, you know, yeah, channeling and, and, and uh, letting energies basically take over. You understand? So a lot of people, especially Christians, of course, interpret this to him allowing demons to take over his body and speak through him and not understanding the role anyway. So uh, one, if he's talking about getting ready to prepare for a role and uh, playing a character and basically calming himself down and allowing the energy of that character to take over. You know, he said he basically forgets himself, you know, lets himself go and let this energy comes in, come in. So basically people interpreted that he removes his energy, his soul, and uh, allow a demon to take over and speak through him and, uh, you know, fulfill these roles or play these roles or what have you. A lot of people took the information out of context and not really understanding what he's saying. Um, the thing is, one, you got to look at it. And he made sure to be clear that what he said first was when people are playing the role of someone else, right? This is a role of a person who actually existed versus the role of a fictional character. Because if you're playing a role of a fictional character, a person who never exists, there's no information on this person. You have to really make up that energy and channel that energy based upon your own interpretation and thoughts of how this character is. Based on what the writers have wrote in for this character, you have to come up with that character and channel that energy within yourself to become that character because there's no information or footage or anything of a character or a person of being that never existed. It's the opposite for somebody who had existed. So Jamie Foxx, when he was playing Ray Charles, he had an opportunity to go and meet Ray Charles and work with him and understand that energy. You know, same thing he talked about when, you know, Mike Tyson's still alive. He can do that voice because he heard Mike Tyson through the years. He's met Mike Tyson. He's been around him. Denzel Washington, when he talked about playing Malcolm X, you know, Denzel actually played Malcolm X before in a play that I think was 1981 where he played Malcolm X before. So he already was familiar with him. So the movie, you know, 
it was it was more easy. So he said in preparing, he read a lot of books. He read a lot of the um, interviews that he did or what have you. And, you know, of course, you can see the, the uh, how he spoke, the video, the interviews that he did when he was alive. And that's what he used to become Malcolm X. Right. So understanding one, when they talk about channeling energy and open them, them, opening themselves up, that means exactly that is to allow in the energy, because when you become someone else, obviously you still are you. Right. It's all metaphorical. You allow in the energy that you're acting and becoming to take over. It's common sense. It's no way in the world that the demon, excuse me, the let's just say the energy or soul of Malcolm X came into Denzel Washington so he can act out, you know, that role. There's no way demons or or spirits. And then you got to understand what he's talking about. He's saying actors who play other people. So what were they when they was alive? Did they die and become a demon, right? And they're just sitting around waiting for an actor to channel them so they can enter their body and, you know, you know, speak through them for this movie. Never movie probably never get made again, again about their life, you know, so they just wait for this one turn because that's what, that's what they're doing. I mean, it's just stupid. Um, you guys got to understand what's being said and what they're talking about. And energy has existed and the channeling of energy has existed long before the creation of the Bible and the creation of Satan, which is a creation. There is nobody channeling demons. Now, here's the thing. We're going to get into this whole thing biblically. So biblically, please show me in your Bible, King James Version, the word demon, right? The word demon does not appear in the King, uh, does not appear in the King James Version. You will not find the word demon in that book. Right. You'll find evil spirit. Right. So in the Bible, we see evil spirits. Right. Or good spirits, good spirits, bad spirits or what have you. And the Bible is never really clear on what a spirit is exactly. We know one's evil. You know, one's a good spirit. Right. So demon, demonic, where did that whole thing come from? What are they talking about demons? Now, people interpret it that demons are the Falling angels, right, of Satan. Satan's fallen angels, that is their demons. Now, we read in the Bible, as we know, 2 Peter 2 to 4 says, For God did not spare even the angels who sinned. He threw them into hell and gloomy pits of darkness, where they are being held until the day of judgment, right? Then you have people who believe that the um, demons are the, you know, disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, you know, the falling angels that came down into the daughters of men. And when God killed them all and drowned them, their spirits roamed the earth and are now demons. The problem with that is the Bible doesn't say that. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that evil spirits are the disembodied spirits of these Nephilim. And then one, if God killed them because they was evil, why would he then make them more powerful than what they was when they was alive? being able to basically inhabit man and make them evil, basically continuing evil. But we don't see the Bible mention anything about that, about the Nephilim or the fallen angels being actual demons. That is something that has been theorized and basically put out there by a lot of people to explain demons because the Bible doesn't really explain it. So this is what people come up with to try to make it make sense. But again, it's not in your book and something that is you know, as powerful or as, you know, uh, really relevant as a demon should be broken down and explained. Even if a demon is an evil spirit, it should be interpreted that way in the Bible, which it is not. We read where where evil spirits actually come from, which I'm going to get to in a sec. Now, people will say that demons are evil spirits, right? I mean, that would make sense. Demons are evil spirits. So... If it's wrong for actors, which I don't, I don't understand how these actors would be able to channel demons to come into them and speak through them when these actors thank Jesus. These actors get awards and thank Jesus. Denzel certainly has thanked Jesus and been on stage and spoken a lot of colleges talking about Christianity and Jesus and what have you, right? All these actors, most of them so-called 
you know, devil worshipers have worn Jesus pieces and have shown themselves to promote Christianity. You see what Kanye West Powerful met one minute, next minute Jesus walks, so on and so forth. So what, what's going on? What are they talking about here? So one, if channeling demons is supposed to be this evil, crazy thing to where, you know, it's of course a bad thing for somebody to be channeling evil spirits. Um, how come God does it in the Bible? First Samuel 16, 14. Now the spirit from the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So an evil spirit from the Lord, right? Judges 9, 23, then God sent an evil spirit between the Bimlech and the man of Shisham. What is it with God sending evil spirits, right? So God sending evil spirits. What is, the, what is the evil spirit? What is that? Where does it come from? Nowhere in the Bible does it says, does it say that evil spirits come from the fallen angels, right? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that Satan is going around putting evil spirits on everybody out there. But it's saying that God is. God is putting evil spirits. You read just two times where God put an evil spirit on somebody, right? So who's creating the evil? Who is the evil one if God is putting out evil? You guys got to remember God created evil. And now he's sending out evil spirits as it's saying in the Bible. So it says, again, go to the Bible. Isaiah 45, 7, I form light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So one of the things that Christians fear the most and most, you know, Bible believing people, they fear Satan. They fear going to hell because they believe Satan is real. They believe demons is real. They don't want no demons messing with their life. Right. Demons are going to come in. They're going to change everything. It's going to be a problem. I don't want to deal with no demons. So everybody's scared of that. Scared of demons. You guys have been turning on the TV, seeing movies about demonic possession or what have you, exorcisms and demons inhabiting people. But where do the demons come from? What is it? What is it talking about? What are demons? The Bible is not giving you demons. Okay, evil spirits. It's talking about evil spirits. Let's say a demon is an evil spirit. That's an obvious connection to me. But the only place we find where evil spirits is coming from in the Bible is from God. So this becomes very confusing to people who are not conscious and don't understand what's going on. One, you have God in the Bible, right? What happens? He drowns mankind, kills everybody on the planet except for Noah and his people uh, for being evil, for being continually evil, right? Drowns them all, kills them, but he leaves Satan alive, who's supposed to be the evil one, the evil one. Satan, leaves Satan alive, doesn't kill Satan kills all these beings on the planet and stuff for Noah and his people for being evil. Then you have God, again, sending evil spirits on people. So how is it okay for God to send evil on people if, if evil is something he's trying to get rid of? That don't make sense. You also got to look at the fact, as I said before, one, you have uh, God giving the Ten Commandments. Moses comes down with the tablets, gives the Ten Commandments to the Israelites, and in those Ten Commandments, it says, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, right? And what is the first thing that God commands them to go and do? God commands them after they, you know, go through the whole 40 years of walking and everything they went through before they went on this whole quest to kill and steal. God commands them to go and do just that, kill and steal. Therefore, wipe them all out, namely the Hivites, the Parasites, the Jebusites, the Gergeshites, right? Go kill them all. Utterly destroy them. Take all this stuff. So he go commands them to kill and steal. So now we have God sending evil spirits on people, right? God sending people to go and kill and steal. Murder little kids. Kill them all, right? Moses doing the same thing. Killing people. Kids. Kill all the men children. You keep the women children for yourself. Evil, right? It's just evil stuff we're seeing. But you have been tricked and trained to give it a pass because the, the book says that it's God that, that, that is doing this. This is how they justify it. God said it's okay, so it's okay to go ahead and kill and steal and do this stuff in the name of God, right? All there for people to interpret and make their own interpretation of what's happening and what's taking place. But all of it becomes more easy to understand when you grasp the concept of duality and what the Bible is trying to give to you. The reason why God doesn't simply kill Satan in the Bible is because he is Satan. He's telling you clear as day, I'm capable of good and evil. I create evil. 
See, everybody got this whole fuzzy notion in their brain that God is only good. That is it. God is good. And he only cares about good. And the book is there to just help people. Why did you hate the book so much? It's a good book. The book is there to help people. And it's a good book. And God is good all the time. And the book, the book doesn't say that. <laughs> the book, the Bible isn't saying that God is good all the time. The Bible was saying that God is evil, that God created evil. God is killing little kids. God allowed the Hebrews to eat their own children. He allowed Moses and them to basically kidnap little girls. The book is showing you all this. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I sent the evil spirit on Saul. I sent the evil spirit on Abimelech. I hardened Pharaoh's heart so he couldn't make up his own mind, meaning taking away free will. Hardened Pharaoh's heart so he couldn't make up his own mind to let the Hebrews go. Right. So we're reading this. This is what I said to you guys. You read the Bible. By the time you get to Second Samuel, your whole understanding of God is he is evil, plain and simple. And it's something that you have to understand. The underlying story to the Old Testament books is why haven't these Hebrews completely given themselves unto their savior? Right. What's happening? They seen the power. Moses parting the sea. Staff turning the snakes. Right. God creating a way for them, giving them everything they're supposed to need, the manna raining down on them, seeing all this power, the power of, of Elijah, the power of Elisha. They're witnessing all of this, right? Yet they don't conform. They don't completely give in and follow the uh, commandments. They keep breaking them. They keep going out and worshiping other gods. What's going on here? And you have to understand that this is a book that you're not supposed to be taking literally, right? Not supposed to be taking it literally. You got to understand what's being put here and that it's giving you a dualistic story. So once you understand that the reason why these evil spirits is talking about exists coming from God, which is supposed to be good, is that it's giving you an understanding and representation of you. Because evil exists within all of us. Good exists within all of us. That is the dualistic nature of the Bible that it's giving you. The evil, the evil devil, the evil of man, God good, the good in man. It's a dualistic principle, dualistic reality is given to you in the book. And it's not some demon that the Bible gives you absolutely no real clear definition of what that is. It's talking about evil spirits, unclean spirits, right? What is that? Where do they come from? Those evil spirits is the evil that exists in man. That's all it is. It can be your addictions. It can be your bad habits. Those are demons. Your defiance, your disobedience, demons, right? That's what it's trying to give you the understanding of, your procrastination, your bad habits are demons. Anything that hold you back that comes from you is considered a demon. Alcoholism, drug addiction, demons. I've got to get this demon off my back, right? What happens? So you have evil spirit, evil spirits. So what happens when a person gets drunk? You see the evil side of that person for the most part. The bad parts of that person comes out because they're they altered their uh, consciousness, they altered their state of consciousness by drinking that liquor, right? Drinking that wine. What do they call it? Spirits, right? Wine and spirits, not spritz. Wine and spirits. And they're using that word spirits because they understand what that wine, what that liquor is going to do to you. It's going to alter your state of consciousness and cause a bad way for you. So even if you are not violent, or crazy when you get drunk, you're different. You've altered your state of consciousness. You're not the same. It will be considered evil. So you have millions of people walking around here scared out their minds, spooky, uh, demons and evil spirits. They exist everywhere because you guys watch too much TV. You watch too many movies, right? The evil, the demons, the what it's talking about as far as spirits exists within you, plain and simple. Energy has existed long before any of this biblical stuff. It is not inconceivable to understand that you can channel an energy just by studying it. We all leave an aura, an energy. If a person comes in the room, a family member, a friend, somebody you're familiar with and understand, 
you feel their energy, even though you don't consciously understand that. They have a feeling to them. Understand? Your boyfriend, your girlfriend has a feeling to them. Your mom has a different feeling. You're just so used to that. It's, you know, it's not conscious to you. It's an unconscious feeling that is normal to you. But when they're gone and they die, what do you say when you step in the room or you see their clothes or you smell their smell? Their energy comes back, right? That's the energy it's talking about. Those feelings come back, right? So you can even in your mind create a being that don't physically exist and channel that being that you have created because you have gave it a persona to act like certain people. You know, when people, a lot of these voiceover guys or a lot of these people who create characters, they usually, when they tell you when they created a character, they took multiple characters from, you know, three or four different people and put it into one. And that's where they got the character from. It's not something outside the realm of understanding when you understand what evil is. It's just people get so caught up in the biblical part of understanding energy. They're scared of anything they see that pertains to demons and Satan or what have you. And they jump on that faster than understanding what energy actually is. We've been channeling energy for a long time. You know, that is what voodoo is about channeling these loa, which is these spirits, but it's energy. The Vs represent these energies of different beings. When you understand everything behind it, you understand how these different loa represent different things. And if you want the energy from these different lower or different beings, you would channel those specific beings. So if you even still, whether they existed or not, create a being that represents the energy of getting money and you're trying to get money, that's the energy you want to channel. If it's been successful for people or what have you, you want to channel these certain energies to work for you. And it has nothing to do with anything satanic. It's the energy that you're channeling. It is no different from you saying, I'm going to keep an open mind.